Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to integrate Flask Admin and Flask Login. And of course, the reason why you would want to do this is because you would want to protect some of your admin views from being seen by users who aren't properly authenticated. So by using Flask Login, you can accomplish this in Flask Admin. So before I get into that, I just want to mention that on my website, prettyprinted.com, I have a bunch of courses. Some are free, some are paid. Any of these courses, you can learn more about Flask or other topics that I happen to cover in the courses. So check that out after you watch the video. So to get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply uh, create a basic Flask admin app. And then once I have that up and running, I'm going to add the authentication parts into it. And just know that this is going to work with something like Flask user or Flask security as well because they're built on top of Flask login. So just because I'm using Flask login in this example doesn't mean that you can't use Flask user or Flask security if you are using those. And the process for doing this will work in any general way. You'll be able to see once I get to it. So I'll talk about it more once I get there. But basically what I'm doing now is I'm just doing the imports to... Uh, get this app up and running. So it's only going to take a moment here. Uh, I think that's it. So I'll instantiate the app, Flask. And then I have a database set up already. Let's see. It's called example.db. So I'll add that as my database. So SQL Alchemy database URI. That's going to be my directory, example.db. DB. I'll need a secret key for when I use Flask login, so I'll add that now, or a secret key, if I can type correctly. I'll just say my secret, and then I'll instantiate SQL Alchemy, and you know what, I'll import Flask login right now because I'll be using the user mixin from Flask login when I create my user model. So. Uh, flask underscore login import user mixin. Okay, there we go. So now I'll create my user class and I'm not going to actually create a screen to log in. I'm just going to create a route that logs you in automatically to save time. So this is only going to have an ID and a name and the name won't actually be used for anything, but for our purposes, for our example, I'll just put it there just so you know that there's a little bit more in the database than simply an ID. So name is going to be DB string, and I'll just say 20 characters. Okay, so now that I have that, what I need to do is I need to basically create the database, or not create the database, but create this user table in the database and then create a user because I won't have an actual screen to log in. So I'll start up Python from app import DB and user. And what I'm going to do is db create all. And then I'll just create a user. Uh, user name is going to be Anthony. And then db session add a, a for Anthony, and then commit. Okay, so if I exit, take a look at my database, select star from user, I should see Anthony there, which I do. Okay, so I have the database set up and I have my one user in the database. Uh, what I'll do is I'll export, now I'll just put the if name block. So if name equals main app run in debug mode. Okay, so I have that. So I have the user table. Now what I want to do is I want to add in the Flask admin parts. So to do that, I need to create the admin object. So I'll instantiate admin, I'll pass an app, and then I'm going to add a view on that app or on that admin object. So admin dot add view. And then I want to import um, model view from flask underscore admin contrib dot SQL a for SQL alchemy, import model view. This is going to convert my SQL alchemy model to a view in flask admin. So add view, my view is going to be a model view and the table is going to be user and the session is going to be DB session, just like that. Okay, so that should be enough to get Flask admin up and running. So I'll start up my app, Python, and then my name is 
app.py. Okay, so now let's take a look. If I go to slash admin, I see the default admin screen and then I see the user table here. And of course I see my one user in the user table here, name is Anthony. So I have Flask admin working correctly. So now that I have all that set up, now I can start talking about how to actually protect this area. So the first thing I'll talk about is how to protect a particular view. And then I'll talk about how to protect this uh, index screen as well, where you see nothing here. Of course, you can customize this. But basically, the idea is you can see all the models that you have set up. So first, to protect the the view for the individual models, what you want to do is you want to create your own class that is going to be your own model view. And the reason why you're doing this is because you're going to inherit from the existing model view and you're simply going to override one of the methods in there. And the method is going to be is accessible. So I'll do that underneath my user class. I'll create a new model view. I'll just call this my model view. And like I said, you need to inherit from model view. So you maintain all the existing functionality. So if I were to just do this pass, so I'm not putting anything, whoops, I'm not putting anything in the my model view. I'm just basically naming it inheriting model view and then using model view down here instead of, or my model view instead of just model view. It's going to work exactly the same because I didn't override anything. And yeah, I just had a syntax error. So there we go. So it works exactly the same. But by creating my own class, I can now overwrite anything that's in model view. And the thing that I want to overwrite is, is accessible. By default, is accessible is something that always returns true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define it here. So is accessible. And basically what this means is if this returns true, that means the user can see the model. If it returns false, that means the user cannot see that model. So I'll change this to be false and let's take a look at what happens. The user goes away. And if I try to go to it directly, it's going to tell me forbidden. So the reason why this is happening is because I'm telling Flask admin that this model view, my model view is never accessible. By default it is, but since I overwrote it to return false, um, it is no longer viewable by anyone. Obviously, that's not something that you will want because there's no point of creating in the first place if no one can ever view it. So the idea here is to return something that evaluates if the current user who's logged in can see it or not. So that's where the Flask login part comes in. So what I'll do is I will add the login manager for Flask logins. So what I'll do is I'll instantiate Flask login here. So uh, login manager is something I need to login manager import from Flask login. So login manager, pass the app, and now it define the, the um, user loader. So login, user loader, and then uh, we'll call this load user. It takes in a user ID. And then basically I want to return the user with that user ID. So that's all I'm doing with the user loader. By the way, if you're not familiar with any of this, you should watch my Flask login videos or my Flask admin videos first so you can get a better idea of what's going on. Right here, I'm just you know going through things quickly just to get it up and running. But basically, uh, when I have Flask login available, I have something called the current user that I can reference, and that current user will always have a state of being either logged in or not logged in. So now if I go to my model view, Instead of returning false directly, I can return current user dot is authenticated. Authenticated. Okay, I couldn't spell that for a second. But um, is authenticated is the Boolean from current user that tells me if the current user is actually logged in or not. So because I haven't done anything to log in, this should ret return false. So if I go back here and everything restarted, yeah. So if I go back here, we see I still can't see my user because I'm not authenticated. If I change this to not to just return the opposite, you'll see that the user comes back just like that. So I remove the not again. 
and now I'll create something that allows me to actually log in. So I'll create a very simple route. Uh, I'll add it down here at the bottom. App route login. And what I want to do is I'll name the function login and I'll simply get the user with the ID of one. So the one user I have in the database. Obviously, if this were a real example, you'd get whoever is logging in. And of course, you'd have some kind of form that they can type into instead of getting it directly. But to save time, I'm not going to do that because it's fairly straightforward. It doesn't really help you with this particular thing that I'm showing you in this video. So I'll import login user to have Flask login associate that user with a session. And I'll simply return a message that says logged in. Okay, so now if I go back here, we see the user is gone because it is looking to see if the current user is logged in. If I go to my login route, it tells me I'm logged in. Now if I go back to admin, I see I can view the user now. And the reason why I can do that is because I'm logged in. If I create another route for a logging out, app route slash log out, This should be log out user, I believe. Logged out. And then I need to import that. Log out user. Okay, so still works. If I go to slash log out and then go back to admin, I can no longer see user because I'm no longer logged in. So if I try to go to user, I get this forbidden. If I want to change that to be something else, like for example, if I want to redirect the user to the login page, I can do that. And it's basically by overriding another one of those methods inside of model view. So in addition to is accessible, I want to define the inaccessible callback. And this callback is always going to be called whenever inaccessible returns false. So inaccessible cannot spell right now. An accessible callback is the name. So you have to get the name exactly because you're overriding the default Flask admin method. So inaccessible callback. It accepts a name and then keyword arguments. I'm not really sure what you would use either the name and the keyword arguments for, but they're being passed to the callback. So you can just put them there. So once you have that, you can return something that you want to happen anytime the user is trying to go to a page that they can't view. By default, it just does a simple abort, but what I can do is I can return the user to a certain page. So I want to redirect, return redirect URL four, and then a page. So that page is going to be my login route. So let me import redirect in URL four, and then we can try this again. So I go to admin, I'm not logged in, but now if I go to user, it redirects me to the login screen, which automatically logs me in because that's how I defined it. If I go back to login, or excuse me, admin, I can see that I can view the user page and I can view it with no problems. So that's fairly straightforward. You basically just override two methods or just one if you're okay with the default behavior of the inaccessible callback. So to do that with the home page of the admin so basically the home here uh it's a very similar process so instead of overriding a model view you're going to override the admin index view so from flask admin i'm going to import admin index view capital v and then i'm going to create a new class so class my admin view and then let's say my admin index view to keep the naming a little bit consistent this is going to inherit from admin index view that i just imported and likewise if i just do pass here it's going to have exactly the same behavior and to use this index view on the admin instantiation, I'm going to pass it here. So index underscore view, I'm going to pass my admin index view. And what this is going to do is it's simply going to use my class instead of the existing one. As you can see, it still works exactly the same because I didn't do anything to it. But if I modify this to have the same 
method. So is accessible. I can return current user dot is authenticated. And now when I do it, it should be looking to see if I'm logged in or not. So let me go to log out. And then if I go back to admin again, it tells me forbidden because I'm no longer logged in. If I go to log in, whoops. If I go to log in and then admin, I can see it again because I'm logged in. And I'm not gonna do it here, but if you add the inaccessible callback to the my admin index view, it behaves in exactly the same way as it does in my model view. And when you're doing this more generally, what you wanna do is just have something that evaluates if a current user can actually view the page. So in this case, it's fairly straightforward because I'm just seeing if a user is logged in, but in a real case, you'd probably restrict the admin route to only admin users. So what you would do is you'd have something that evaluates to true or false, depending on if they're an admin user. So if you're using something like Flash Security, then you can check the role of the user. And you can say if their role is admin or if they have the admin role, then they can be they can view the admin routes. So basically that has role will be here in the return statement instead of current user that is authenticated. And if you're not using SQL Alchemy or Flask login, the process is still similar. The idea is just you want to return something that tells you if the user who's logged in or for whatever reason, the user can see the page or they can't see the page. So that just depends on the specifics of your app, but just know the process is pretty much the same. So that's it for this video. That's all I wanted to cover. Like I said, if you want to view more of my courses or just more of my videos on Flask and other topics, you can go to my website. If you have any questions about this video, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer any questions. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.